Okay, welcome everybody. Welcome to the NASA Earth Data Webinar, Diving into the NASA Data Pool with dac to disk This is your host, Jennifer Brennan. While everybody's logging in, we do have two optional polls at the bottom of the page, and you'll see those on the left and middle portion of your uh, screen that we'd like you to answer if you could. I do have 2 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, so I'd like to go ahead and get started. As I mentioned, I'm your host, and I'm also the NASA Earth Observing System Data and Information System, or EOS DISC, Communications Lead at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center. So let's first begin by going over a few housekeeping items related to this webinar. <coughs> Excuse me. First, to ensure best audio experience, the conference has been placed in silent mode. However, if you have any questions um, or any kind of issues, please enter them into the Q&A pod located in the lower right-hand corner of your screen, and this works like a chat. So if you can hear me loud and clear and you're listening to audio by way of computer, why don't you type in a little message to me in the Q&A pod that um, audio is coming through just fine. That would be very helpful, and I appreciate that. Um, next point is that this webinar will be recorded. It will also be posted to not only our NASA Earth Data Adobe Connect online catalog, but it will also be posted to our NASA Earth Data YouTube channel. I'll provide the URL to all of you at the, on the contact slide at the end. Additionally, all presentation files will be available for download at the end of the webinar. The webinar itself is one hour long. 45 minutes are allocated to the presentation and live demonstration, with another 15 minutes for the question and answer period. After our speaker has finished her presentation, what we'll do next is we'll move to a final set of polling questions. And the question and answer period follows directly after the final polling questions. So as I mentioned earlier, you will have an opportunity to ask your questions throughout all portions of the webinar, except during the demo portion by using the Q&A pod. Questions will not be answered using the raising hand function this has been disabled. What we'll do is we'll take all questions at the end using the Q&A pod. And one final note, depending upon the volume of questions that are received, we will extend the Q&A period an additional 15 minutes to 3.15 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for those of you who wish to stay on the line. So what I'd like to do next is move to our agenda. All right, that should be pulling up for everybody. During the first 20 minutes or so today, our speaker, Kelly Lemig, will provide you with an overview of the NASA Land Processes Distributed Active Archive Center, as well as an introduction to the dac to disk Download Manager. During the next 20 minutes, we will switch to a live demonstration of the dac to disk Download Manager. With that, it is my pleasure to introduce our speaker today, Kelly Lemig, who is the User Services Lead at the NASA Land Processes Distributed Active Archive Center, or LPDAC. Kelly? Thanks, Jennifer. Can everybody hear me okay? Um, I just wanted to say welcome to everybody and thanks for dialing in today. Um, as Jennifer just said, that my name is Kelly Lemig, and I am the User Services Lead here at the Land Processes DAC. I've been here for almost 15 years now, and so the last seven have been in this role as the user services lead. We just released this, uh, this DAC to disk download manager a few months ago, and I hope this webinar is useful tool, is useful for you to get started using it. So let me get started, and we'll get started with a background of, of who we are at the, at the LP DAC. So we're the Land Processes Distributed Active Archive Center. We're at the USGS Earth Resources Observation and Science Center in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And we're one of 12 of NASA's Earth Observing System Data and Information System, or EOS DACs. And you can see on our slide here, we've got our website address. So you can check out our site uh, after the webinar. A little bit more about the LPDAC. We process, archive, and distribute land remote sensing data from several satellites, um, uh, several sensors aboard several different satellites. We have the MODIS, 
the moderate resolution imaging spectral radiometer data that's aboard Aqua and Terra. We also have the ASTER data that's aboard Terra. We have some selected NASA measures products as well as some community products. And this data that's available through the DAC to disk is all available free to the remote sensing community. So today we're going to talk about what is the DAC to disk, why you'd want to use it, who would use it, we'll give some use cases, and then we'll have some time for questions. So what is the DAC to disk download manager? Simply put, it's, uh, it's just a way of leveraging our online data archives from the LPDAC data pool. It'll provide you immediate direct access to the science data, the metadata, and the browse images. The data that you can get from DAC to disk is essentially all of the data that's available from the data pool. So you can download all of our MODIS data holdings, the ASTER L1B data for the United States and Territories, L1B and L1A expedited data, all of the, the web-enabled Landsat data or WELD data holdings, all of the NASA Shuttle Radar Topography Mission or SRTM version 3 data holdings, and all of our Global Emissivity Database or GED data holdings. This tool also allows you to access data from other archive centers and again, it's available at no cost. The features of the DAC to disk tool, we have two interfaces. One of them is web-based, and the other is a command script that you'll host on your machine. There are several ways to download the data. We have a parameters option, a text file option, or a URL. And then there's a user guide available on the site, too, in case you have any issues. So why did we develop the DAC to disk tool? Well, it's to help you download data over large areas or for long continuous periods of time. This tool also has no granule limits. There's no software to install. And there's no login required to get the data. Here's an image of our data pool page. As you can see, um, on this tab right here, we have the direct HTTP access. And all of the different products are listed below. And once you select a product, you'll be taken to a page that has the, the listing of all of the different products that are included in that section. And then you can drill down in through the date, and then to the specific, in the case of MODIS, the specific tile. Right next to that, there's a tab for the LPDAC to Disk Download Manager. And here's where you'll find some more information. Right here you see we've got a link to the user guide right here. Um, this first paragraph describes the web-based interface with the link to that here. And the LPDAC to Disk utility the script that you would have on your machine locally is available in three different operating system formats. Here's an image of the DAC to disk web-based interface. And as you see in that box, you have the three different options that are available. You can select via parameters, select from a file, or select an order URL. Here's an image of the script that would be located on your machine. It has the same three options where you can use parameters, you can use a text file, or you can upload a URL from an order email. So before we get started, I just want to give you a few tips for using the, the tool, for using the web GUI. Use Google Chrome. Google Chrome is the preferred browser to use, as it is the browser that will allow you to download the metadata files. Uh, the other browsers will attempt to open those XML files instead of downloading them to your machine. So use Google Chrome if you plan to download metadata files. You'll also want to change your browser settings 
for data to download to a specific folder. Instructions, specific instructions for that are located in the user guide, but that will allow you to download the data without having to click and specify a location for it to save um, for each individual file. And the third point is to research data types or short names on the LPDAC website or other relevant DAC websites. This tool will allow you to download any data that's available on any of the DAC's data pools, meaning that it has to be downloadable in order to, to get it from this site. So going through and getting data with the DAC to disk tool, today we're going to go over three use cases and that will be through searching by a bounding box or a tile, downloading data from two different DACs with an input file, and downloading data from Reverb using one of the order URLs. So with that, let's go ahead and start, we'll start with the review of data pool, and then we'll go through a live demo of the web-based interface. And then we'll do a demo of the script interface. So I'm just pulling up the browser now. Okay, can everybody see that okay, I hope? This is a, an image of our data pool page up here at the LP DAC. And you'll notice what we had earlier in our screenshot the direct HTTP access right here, and you can select the product that you're looking for. And it takes you to a tree structure where you can drill through and pick out the data that you'd like to download. So going back up, we can click on the LP DAC to disk download manager. And here's where you click on the GUI to launch that. And as you see, we have a notice right up front that says that not all the data from every archive center is available for download using this tool, even though the short name appears in the list. And that's the caveat that I talked about earlier, that as long as the data is available to download through a DAX data pool, you can get that through here. As long as it's, it's a good rule of thumb to remember, if it's downloadable in Reverb, it'll be downloadable through this tool. So we're just going to click on OK to, to send that message away. And right here is where you select how you'd like to get your data. So we have select via parameters as the default, or we can enter our file or our order URL. So we'll start with selecting via parameters. And I'll scroll down just a little bit here. And you can see we have a map over here. And there's a couple of tools. You have the, hand, the pan tool or the select a box tool, the typical map selection tools that you're probably familiar with. Then over here, you can select your archive center. And LPDAC is selected by default. And we can select a short name from data available at the LPDAC through this list. And then we'll want to select a version. Some data products have more than one version. So we can enter that there. And then just a, a date selection is available here. And now we can select our area using either coordinates or tiles. So for coordinates, if I select the box, I can drag a box on the map and it enters the coordinates in for me right here. You can also type them in if you have a box and you know what your coordinates are. If you want to select via tiles, you select this radio button, the map comes up, and you see in the sinusoidal grid, you see all of the different tiles that you can select here. And I can go through and I can select a couple of tiles. And then at the bottom, you have three options. You can, you can download the science files, which would be like the HDF files, the metadata, and the browse, or any combination of those, of those three. So once you're satisfied with your search selection criteria, click on the Submit button. 
And as the system loads, I didn't find any files for that area. Let's see if we can expand our search here. Okay, so now we have 24 files that are found. And this is what gives you the opportunity, say it was a lot of files. If, if, if you have a larger area or a large time series, um, what we talked about earlier about not having any order limitations, you could get thousands of results using this tool. So this is a good point to, to tell you about. While there are no limitations, there is the limitation of how much data your computer can hold. And so you need to make sure that you have enough free space on your disk to download all of these files. Once you click download from this point, if you've set your browser up correctly, those 24 files will download directly to the folder that you've specified. So that's one easy way to get all of that data right to your computer just really quickly. So now, say you've got some data, you want to look at it, and you want to look at, you want to view the browse imagery. You can use another tool like Reverb to search through the data and pick out your scene. And then once you get to the order part, you can select a file. So you can, you can download a file to your machine. And here's where you would choose that input file and upload it. So I'm just going to select my file on my machine here. So I have this, this text file that I've downloaded from Reverb. And when I cl click Submit, it finds four files and asks me where to save them. So we can also go back and select from an order URL. So if you've placed an order through a site like Reverb, you can take that URL that you would get from your, from your order email, place the URL in here, click Submit, and download those as well. So let's go back to our PowerPoint presentation, and I can show you how that all works with the script part. You can download that from your machine. Okay. So when you're downloading for the script by a bounding box or a tile, you can use short name, version, the type of data file, the time frame, the bounding box coordinates or the tile name, and then the output file to write to. Here's an image of the script as it's loaded on your machine. And you can see here that you have the usage parameters right here, and what you would need to select in your, in your command. Here is an image of the, of the command in action. So you see I have the name of the tool, I have the short name that I'm requesting, I have the version ID, I have um, the date, and then here's the bounding box information in this, in this red square, and then I've specified the output file directory here. So once you've executed that command, the system will come back and it tells me that I have 18 files to download and ask me if I want to continue. Again, here's your, your check to make sure that you're not downloading 1,000 files or 2,000 files or something into a file directory where you don't have enough space. So in this case, 18 files, that's fine. I've, I've, I've typed in Y for yes, and it downloaded those files into the directory that I specified. Here's an image with the same command using the tile ranges to give you an idea of how that works. So for use case number two, we're going to search and select download data as a text file in Reverb. So here's what I was talking about earlier. When you're in Reverb, you can place your granules in the cart. And once you select the shopping cart, you have the option here to download. Once you click that button, you're presented with this pop-up box 
that allows you to select your URL to download. And again, you can select data, metadata, or browse, or any combination of the three. It'll give you a text file, and once you save that text file to your machine, it'll look like this. And you see I have FTP and HTTP URLs in this file. So one of them here is from LARC, and one of them here is from the LPDAC, another one from LARC and us. So this tool also allows you to download data from multiple centers in one command. So once you've searched for data through there, download that text file, then like I showed you with the GUI, you input that text file and it, this tool will go out and download all of the data for you. So you don't have to go out and click on your URLs each individually and select a place for them to download on your machine. So here's a copy of the syntax, what that command looks like for the script. You have dac to disk underscore win dot exe, then your input file, which would be the location of that text file that you downloaded, and where you want the data to be saved, the output directory. Here we have an image of that in action. So we have the dac to disk tool here our input file, where it's located, and where we want the data to be written to, the output directory. So in this case, we have the four files to download, as you saw in the text file. And do we want to continue? We click yes, and it downloads those into our directory, just automatically. So the third use case that we're going to go through is downloading with an order URL from Reverb. Again, when you're in the cart, when Reverb, when you have your, your granules in the cart, you select order. And these are for those granules that may not be downloadable, but they're orderable. And you still would like to order a lot of those and not have to click individually for each file and select an option for them to save to your computer. Here's an image of the order URL email that you would get. Um, you have your order ID, your request ID, the type, in this case it's HTTP, the host, and your FTP poll, or your HTTP poll download link is right here. So you'd copy and paste that link into the script option here. So you have again the DAC to disk, the, the win.exe, the order URL, and then the output. So here's a, an image of how that looks. Again, you have your, your downloader.exe, your order URL, and the output URL, or output directory, excuse me. And it's downloading those files from that URL. Again, the four files, do you wish to continue? Yes, and it downloads those files to our computer. So just to summarize, what we've talked about today is the dac to disk Download Manager that will access all of the publicly available data from not only the LP DAC, but all of the other EOS disk DACs. You can use a simple GUI or a command line script to get the data. And it allows you to quickly download many granules of data over large areas or long periods of time. So with that, that concludes my demonstration today. And I'll turn this back to Jennifer. Okay, thank you, Kelly. We ended this a little bit early today, but um, maybe that leaves more time for questions. So why don't we now move to our final set of polling questions. And we will give these questions a couple of minutes, and then afterward we'll follow up with the Q&A portion of the webinar. Okay, so please be sure to stay in the room and or stay on the line to participate in the question and answer period. All right, thank you.
Okay, I'm going to give the polling questions just another moment or so, probably another minute, and then we'll jump straight to the question and answer period. Thank you. Okay, everybody, let's jump to the period here. As you can see below in the lower right-hand corner, what I've done is I have uploaded um, Kelly's presentation as well as the agenda. So if you'd like to download the file, all you would do is use your cursor, highlight the file, and then you should be presented with an opportunity to download the file, okay? And so let's see if we've got any questions here. I don't, let's see, I don't see any yet. Okay, so the first question uh, comes from Nathan Kelly. Could you go over the syntax for dac to disk underscore Linux? Kelly? Okay, so the, da the syntax for using Linux should be the same as it is for using Wind Windows. All of those commands should be the same. All you would need to do is type in the name of the downloader. You just type in the DAC to disk underscore, and then in this case it would be linux.exe with no operators behind it, and it'll bring up the usage for you. And you should get all of your information there. Okay, could you also um, type that into the uh, Q&A pod, Kelly? I think that would be really useful. Absolutely. All right, great, thank you. Let's see if we've got more questions. Okay, our next question is, can data retrieved unpack into a hierarchical directory matching source? Okay, so are you talking about unpacking some of the bits for some of the MODIS data? I'm not sure I understand that question. So Joseph, if you could provide further clarification by typing it into the um, Q&A pod, I think that would be very helpful. Again, it was, can data retrieved unpack into a hierarchical directory matching source? From Joe Glassy. All right, Joe, while we're waiting for, okay, let's see. Okay, just want to avoid thousands of files in one folder as appropriate. Oh, I see, I see. Um, not that I know of right now, but if you would email me at lpdac at usgs.gov, I'll talk with the developers and see if we can find a way to do that. So I've just entered our speaker's contact information into the um, Q&A pod for everybody, okay? And then our next question is from John. John asks, are you able to gather user information and requirements? I'm sorry, so what's the next question? The next question is, are you able to gather user information and requirements? Absolutely, yes. Please also email that, that email address that Jennifer put up there and, and we'll gather whatever comments that you have about the tool. All right. 
So does everybody see my response with Kelly's email address? I hope I can enter it in. Okay, great. So the next question, Kelly, is what technologies were used on the back end to create this tool? For example, Esri. Okay, so for that question, we didn't use any Esri products to, to create this tool. Really what we're doing through the back end is accessing Reverb through, ac actually ac accessing Echo, excuse me, um, and accessing the data holdings that they have there um, through, through a script. Okay, thanks, Kelly. The next question is, is data returned, quote unquote, compressed, for example, in a tar.gz file? Uh, the answer to that is no, it is not compressed or zipped or anything. Okay, thank you, Kelly. The next question is, is there any accurate way to obtain size estimates prior to data download? Um, so size estimates for each individual product will, will vary. For our instance, for the LPDAC, you would actually just go to one of our product pages that are located on our website. And there's a range for the data size, for the size for each granule. And when you get that pop-up box where it tells you how many granules returned, that's kind of how you can estimate approximately how large or how much space you'll need in your directory. Okay, thank you, Kelly. Any additional questions? Well, we're waiting to, um, you know, give people an opportunity. Oh, okay, here's a follow-up. For the question regarding the Linux script, please see the DAC to disk user guide from Kari Beckendorf, um, who is also a scientist out of the LP DAC. Okay, the next question is, Pardon me for a moment. Are there plans to make VIRS data available? Okay, so the answer to that is going to be kind of wishy-washy for now. Uh, the data that, for VIRS, the data that will be available on the data pool will be available through this, through this tool. So I'm not sure at this point what VIRS data will be available through the data pool and what we'll have to place an order for. Um, but if it is available on the data pool, it will be available through this tool. Okay, thanks, Kelly. The next question is, will, uh, in parentheses, freeze, thaw, or SMAP level 4C data from NSIDC also eventually be offered? So that's another question I would have to defer to NSIDC. If they're not offering that data through ECHO or on their data pool, then it won't be available through this tool either. Okay, so we do have some folks in the uh, still online from NSIDC. If you want to um, type an answer to the Q&A pod, feel free to do so. Um, and then I'll just go ahead and move forward to the next question. And the next question is, is there a mechanism such that previously downloaded files will not be downloaded unless the file on the server is updated, such as with some options using wget? Currently, that is not an option, um, but I can take that down as a note and we can talk with the developers and see if, if that would be an option. If you wanted to email that question to me, I could get back to you with, uh, with what the feasibility for that would be. And the, the other thing I should note, Kelly, is that the Q&A um, pod content is something that, you know, the log uh, is persistent, so I will actually email you this log so you'll have the individual's contact information and also the question. Great. Okay, so if there's a need to follow up offline with any of these questions, um, certainly that information will be provided to Kelly. Let's scroll down here and see if we have, okay, so the answer to the previous question um, from Lisa Booker at NSIDC, as far as I know right now, SMAP data at NSIDC will be available on our data pool and through ECHO. And I believe that was um, Joe Glassie's question. Any additional questions? Um, just to let everybody know, as you see on the thank you slide, we do have a NASA Earth Data Facebook account, and we also have a Twitter account. And, and generally what I try to do there 
uh, as well as the Google Plus account, is to post content from across the 12 NASA US DISTACs. And so if you're interested in connecting with us um, by way of any of those accounts, that would be great. We'd love to hear from you. Additionally, if you search on YouTube for NASA um, Earth data, you'll see that all of our previous webinars, and um, there, are, there are about 20, are posted on the uh, YouTube channel, the NASA YouTube channel as well. And then we have an ability to sign up for our webinar mailing list if you go to the tinyurl.com Earth Data Webinar. Um, and then you would receive only announcements. The only thing I'm going to push out there is announcements for upcoming uh, data discovery or data access webinars. Any additional questions? I don't think I've missed any questions. Um, I'll give it just another minute or so. And um, if there are no further questions, what I generally try to do is leave this, uh, I'll log off the telecon so you won't hear any more audio, but you could certainly continue to ask questions through the Q&A pod, and I will leave the online meeting space open for 10 additional minutes so that those of you who are interested in downloading the presentation files have an opportunity to do so. So we'll give it another minute or two and see if we've got any more questions. And I would like to thank all of you for participating today. PDAC. All right. Doesn't look like there are any further questions. All right, everybody. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we will have our next webinar. I'm not sure what the title will be, but um, we'll be talking about metadata standards. So it's a little bit more of a specific type of webinar, and that will be held the second week of January. So if you stay tuned and check out our Earth Data webinar um, URL, you'll see an announcement for that in the coming weeks, the next couple of weeks or so. All right, so thanks for joining us. I will log off the telecon now, and um, I'll leave the meeting room open. Oh, you're welcome, Jennifer. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Brock. All right, bye-bye now.